Greetings students. Uh, today we are going to be looking at uh, petals of blood. In our previous videos, we discussed the plot of petals of blood. And in another video, we discussed the characters and the characterizations that is the role of each character in the novel. And as well, we have discussed extensively the themes and the thematic analysis or a thematic analysis in the novel. Today we are going to be looking at the literary devices in the novel. So if you haven't watched the other videos on the plot analysis, the themes, the characters, please you can search the channel. You will get them so that you watch them and uh, you will have a better understanding of the novel. Uh, we have discussed all of them extensively before. Each character, the role of each character, Wanja and other characters we have discussed. So today we'll be looking at uh, the literary devices and um, we are going to start with the imagery that is imagery or image we found in the novel. What are some of the images that are very prominent and dominant in the novel uh, Petals of Blood? One of the images that we encounter in the novel is Umarog. Umarog, as you know or if you haven't read it before, Umarog is a village, is a rural area and we saw in the novel that some of the young men now um, travel to Umarog. Wanja was an indigenous of uh, uh, Umarog, who is a lady. And then we saw the teachers who travel all the way to Umarog to come and start. And then we saw other characters also who were in Umarog to do business or to teach in the local school. Now, Umarog is a very poor rural area where the people find it hard to feed and uh, most of the people there depend on uh, peasant uh, farming small farming system in their uh, ancestral land so that they will be able to feed so when there is um, when there is uh, uh, drought maybe rain did not fall early it used to affect the inhabitant of uh, Umarog because many of them may not be able to cultivate their crops and then be able to feed their family as a result of a rainfall. So we saw in the novel that on several times rain did not fall early and that also affects the, the, the characters in the play. And then that is even one of the reasons why the characters have to travel to the city for some time to go and look for the addition. Then we have character like uh, Munira, Abdullah, Wanja, and Kariga. Munira was a teacher there. Abdullah was the businessman. And then Wanja was a young lady who later engaged into prostitution. And then we have Kariga, who also came an assistant teacher in the village. And um, he was uh, so, uh, helping Munira in the school. So we also see the resident living huts. And a bicycle is viewed as extraordinary icon of modernity. Now, somebody who have a bicycle is regarded as a great person in the um, uh, Umarok village. It is a quiet place, and uh, uh, the people try to help each other. And at later, before the end of the novel, the village was transformed. Now, the another image we found dominant in the novel again is the image of the journey. Which journey? The journey to Nairobi, the journey from Umarok to Nairobi, where almost all the characters and the villagers travel from the Umarok village to Nairobi to go and meet the parliament, uh, the members of the parliament, and to solicit for help of what has before them as a result of the famine that come occasioned by drought, by uh, lack of rainfall. So we saw that the journey is an epic journey. And then we saw that even the members of the parliament were not helping, rather they were playing. And we saw that one of the members of the parliament in which the people lodge in his house 
try to rape Wanja. And I told you Wanja is a very beautiful lady um, who later engaged in prostitution. So we also saw that uh, nearly all the images of Epic Johnny are the alien child. The child was sick, somebody who was sicker. They search for water. The late night storytelling, which they do. And as well, the wandering under the moon. And then these images help give gravitas to the tale. You know, sometime in the night, they have to talk about uh, uh, moonlight tale, moonlight tale, how they talk about thing, things that happen in the ancient time. So all those things, it adds uh, a kind of uh, embellishment to the journey to Umarog. Now, let's look at another image we can find in the novel, the city. Now, there is a great contrast between Umarok and the city and Nairobi. Umarok is a rural area, very local, that even somebody who has a bicycle is regarded as a very rich man. But in Nairobi, you see modern houses, you see um, cars, expensive cars, modern cars, motorcycles, uh, road tight. And no, unlike uh, Umarog, where most of the houses are just huts, hot built by um, mud, by putting sand together, and then it was uh, covered with thatch, thatch with uh, grasses. Okay, so the houses in the evil in the in the, um, in Nairobi, they are large. The people are well dressed, and the travelers are woefully out of place in their professionalism. Why? Because the way the people dress is not the way those traveling to the uh, to the city from Morog dress. So the people they seek or to talk to in the city, like Kimeria, Reverend Gerald Brown, Underi, Chiu, are vastly different than them in the way they talk, in the way they dress, in the way they behave. So there is a suggestion of moral laxity in the confluence of such elements. So most of the behaviors and the utterances of the people that live in the city also depict that uh, there is some of moral laxity unlike the city unlike the village of Moro, where everything is done according to tradition and according to the convention of the people in the village in nairobi it is not so everybody's on his own and people behave the way they like except you may not be allowed to break the rule or to or commit a crime which the law will catch up with you but the dressing the way you walk wherever you go whatever you want to do all are to your own discretion in the city of nairobi but it is not so in nairobi nairobi is the culture the convention everybody is doing things according to the tradition now we have another image in the novel the new umarok now what happened to the old umarok when civilization began to come the railway pass we saw that uh, we saw a new umarok that embraces technology and modernization and even capitalism so we saw that um, now there is a light 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 in umarok large buildings in umarok then we have shanty towns bordering wealthy neighborhood then ever present road associate laborers people who are working on the railway who are working on the road then we have all this give the impression of rapid and uh, ever growing changes in the old umarog now the new umarog now also reflects that uh, wanja also have a house of her own where she do her prostitution and then we saw that people travel all the way from other countries from other areas to umarog for business uh, uh, for business trip so people bought land the government officials come and people from other places so umarok began to develop just like the modern society we have we uh, will go to a place today maybe a village a rural area in the next two three years when you go back there again there are uh, drastic changes because there will be new buildings, there will be new development, new facilities. That was what happened also in the novel. Now, we these are most of the images that we can find in the novel. There are other images that like, like the image of Ba, 
where Abdallah is working. That is also image of bar is there. Then we also have even the image of prostitution, the image of death, where Munira have to stab um they have to to to, to key some of the uh, lovers of uh, Wanja. And also we have the image of um of hospital where Wanja was hospitalized. So when you go through the first video, the second video, this I think this should be the fourth video. The plot analysis you will understand it more. Okay. Now let's go to another literary device used in the novel. Now another device is dramatic irony. By telling us how the book ends before it begins. That is one of the way the dramatic irony is used. Now the novel started with uh, the investigation by the police of the death of a, 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 a businessman, a teacher, and um, the, the injury that a lady sustained. So at the beginning, we read or we saw the end, and then through flashback, the beginning began to unveil. The beginning of the incident began to unveil through the plot narrative. And we saw that uh, before the death of the of the people, what actually happened that led to the death. Okay, the novel started with the investigation of the case of death. But towards the end, we saw that uh, actually what led to that investigation. Now, that is dramatic irony. It was structured in a way that uh, the beginning comes before the end. Uh, the beginning comes at the the ending comes at the beginning of the novel. Okay. Now uh, uh, we have discussed the characters as well already. Then another dramatic irony is the authority. The villagers do what? How did authority is being portrayed or it is used as a dramatic irony in the novel? The villagers think that some of their suffering from the drought will be elevated. If they could only speak with the authority, can you, you can see? So they say we should let those in authority know. Maybe if they knew, yes, yes, maybe if they knew of our plight, they would not be sending men only to collect tax and order to demand money for organizations the villages know nothing about. Now you can see that maybe in page, um, for my own version, in page 115, you can get that. Now, they talk to the authority with the hope that, okay, if they could get to Nairobi and talk to the members of the parliament, their problems will be over. Because the authority also sent people to be collecting tax in the Umarok village. Now, the situation they found themselves was that when they talked to the authority, their expectation was dashed. Why? Because the authority did not act as expected. And they did not understand that the authority certainly must know what is going on and that they probably care little, not showing any concern. So the villagers, hopefully, hopefulness is there, an example of dramatic irony, because we can see that uh, they are foolhardy in their trust of the authority. They trust the authority, but the authority did not care about them, or rather the authority did not trust them. So we could see the, uh, the, the two extreme ends, a total belief in the authority that the problem will be solved, and the total carelessness or less concern, unconcerned by the authority. Now, we have another irony in the novel. We have verbal and situational irony, which we see in the life of the clergyman. So, we saw that the, the, the journey villagers expect some help from the clergyman of the city. Maybe they will give them... Um, charitable arms they give they will help them because they believe that uh, those who are clergymen those who are probably pastors or or, or leaders of other religious group uh, we uh, will be able to render help as the villagers be believe that those are servants of god those are people that preach goodness that preach god so we saw that uh, he recited the word they are hungry and thirsty, those who have not eaten the loaf of Jesus. Do you know the reverend, holy bastard, who only offer us the food of the spirit, so the bread and the fish of Jesus? 
Now, they we are expecting money. They are expecting probably bags of wheat and corn from the from from the religious organization. But the reverend only offer the holy what they call holy communion, the fre the, the fish and the, the bread of Jesus. So we saw that uh, they, 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 they are trust also as well on the clergyman. We are so dashed just as they are trust in the authority. So there was no any correlation why the reverend also showed less concern of him not directly responsible for the plight of the villagers. The villagers were hoping that even though the, the, the clergyman was were not uh, responsible directly or they were not the reason for their suffering, should be able to render help as being clergymen. But you know, they did not render any help, just like the authority. So we could see that is a, another great irony in the novel. Now, this is where we are going to be stopping today. We have discussed two uh, literal devices, the, the use of imagery and also dram uh, irony. And then we saw the different form of irony, use dramatic irony, situational irony in the novel. Now, in our subsequent video, which I'm going to upload uh, probably tomorrow, I'm going to upload it, is going to be on metaphor, the use of metaphor, the use of simile, and also the use of hyperbole in the novel. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so that when it is uploaded, you will get notified and then you can also as well uh, play the video and read the writings so that you have full understanding of the novel, okay, of the use of literal devices in the novel. Thank you very much. And also, uh, you can recommend the channel to your friends. Uh, who are also students of English language and literature so that they could subscribe. We are also uploading more not only on literature, we are also uploading on English language. I'm going to upload more videos on English language as well. Thank you very much and have a very good day.